forgot to get in shape, and I'll be such a fat piece of shit before I shot this. Oh wait, that's right. Oh, I'm right. Let's put this out for a couple months. <laughs> All right, we're gonna we're gonna wait. Yeah, let's put this out for a few months. All right. Hey guys, it's Chris. Um, do you want to start that again so you're not in the middle of drinking water? But when you do that, yeah. Hey guys, it's Chris, uh, here with the 1,000 subscriber Q&A. Wave to the back of the camera, Tyler. Hey! Uh, he's going to be reading off some questions that you guys asked, and I'm going to be answering those questions that you guys asked. Super Mario Fan 03 has asked you a few questions. First off, how the hell are you? I'm good. Favorite and least favorite movie of the year so far? Uh, least favorite, Batman vs. Superman. It's hard to... It's hard to get worse than that. Uh... Man. Oh, man. That's all I really need to say about that. Favorite so far, uh, The Lobster was pretty good. Your favorite Final Fantasy protagonist? If you're talking, like, main main characters, probably Zidane. Um... If you're talking like just any of the protagonists, not just the main character, I really like Nanaki from Final Fantasy VII. Uh, I think he's super cool. Um, I also really like uh, Steiner and Garnet and Vivi from Final Fantasy IX. In addition, to, I, pro I might like them more than Zidane, but I also do like Zidane a lot. He is like the best main character, I think, in the series. What is your favorite video game couple? Probably Zidane and Garnet. <laughs> Zidane and Garnet is pretty much one of the only love stories I can think of in games that isn't just like, ah, these two guys are, uh, I mean, not two guys. It's very rarely two guys. Um, this, this guy and this girl are uh, both, uh, you know, both, both cute and they're both main characters, so they're gonna fall in love for no reason. Uh, Zidane and Garnet's one of the only times when it actually kind of built out of something natural, so that was really cool. Um, yeah, just a, it's, a, it's a pretty good love story. Next up, we have PSB123. His first question is, what do you think of Ruby? I don't really like it. I, I, I've seen a little bit of it. I just don't like it. I've never really been into anime. And I, I don't like it. Isaac really likes it. I don't, I don't, know, I don't know how. I don't like it. <laughs> How much do you care about Mighty Number no. 9 and the controversy surrounding it? I think it's hilarious, because I backed Mighty Number no. 9 uh, just enough to like get a copy of the game, because I was really curious about it. Uh, it looks bad. <laughs> it looks... It looks really bad. I'm not upset about it. I just think it's funny. So many people are just furious about it. What do you think we'll see in terms of cuts to the Smash 4 roster come Smash 5? Smash 4 roster! Probably at least one of those Fire Emblem characters is going to be cut and replaced with somebody else. Probably another Cause... Fire Emblem character. Yeah, with another Fire Emblem character. <laughs> like, like, I have a really hard time justifying all of those Fire Emblem characters, like, existing. So many of them aren't actually that important, like, to the series, to, like, warrant staying in. Um, I think outside of Marth and probably Ike, I wouldn't say any of them are, like, really set to come back. But, well, Robin might. As far as other cuts go, I don't know. At this point, it's who knows. Now that now that they keep adding characters, uh, we might not really need to cut anybody anymore. What do you say? Cloud. Cloud. Maybe. I. Uh, they know he's a huge selling point, though. So I, I can't imagine them getting rid of him unless uh, unless Square just wouldn't let them. Which. Why would they? Do you think it would be a good idea if DLC characters in Smash 5 were free? Mm, no, at least not all of them. Because then you have no reason to keep developing those characters. Like, it would be great for the players, but why should they keep developing content for the game afterwards? At least something that's as intensive as adding characters, because that's the main crux of the game. I guess Splatoon did it, but like, Splatoon didn't change mechanics as much as adding a new character in Smash does. 
So I don't know. It's if they are okay with taking that loss of profit, uh, it would be great for the fans. But it's uh, it's not it's not the best business move, and so I, I doubt it's going to happen. Do you like scythes? Scythes are pretty cool. Am I using a scythe in D and D? No, I'm using a. You're using a pick. I'm using a war pick. Ah, yeah, scythes are pretty cool. They're not used that four, often. Yeah, they give you times four critical, three point five. Yeah. They're like one of the most devastating weapons, and they're a farm tool. It's cool. I mean, they're they're a farm tool, but it's also because they're, they're just a big blade. Yeah. On a stick. Next up, we have Kaj Harvey. His first question is: You said in the past that Harmpit isn't dead. Is Harmpit dead? Uh. The thing with Harmpit is that it was supposed to be like a collaborative thing, uh, but then it kind of wound up just being me doing everything. And then I was also doing everything for this channel. And then I was also trying to do film stuff. And so Harmpit kind of fell by the wayside just because doing like sketch comedy requires so many more people uh, than just like one person. And so I would, I would do it every now and then while I was still in school, just because I had enough people around me that I could still do it. Uh, I wouldn't be opposed to making things for it, and we've talked about a couple ideas that could go up on there. Uh, it's just probably the lowest priority when it comes to making videos for me uh, right now, because it does come after this channel for me. But if other people uh, wanted to make something, uh, other people that I know, and were willing to help out with the editing and the, the writing and the planning and everything, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd totally be down for it. Number two, what would you be? What would be your dream role to play in a movie? A good one, one that's well written. I don't know. Like it's, it really just depends on how well written the script is. That's really just what it comes down to. I don't, I don't care if it's like, oh, you're a cowboy. Like I, yeah, cowboy would be pretty cool. But like, I, just something well written and interesting. Will you do Evil Land Two? Sorry. I 100 percent of that game almost a year ago, and I still haven't made a video on it just because I don't. You want to know what the difference between Evil Land and Evil Land 2 is? 30 hours. That's the difference. It's just that Evil Land 2 has more of the same stuff in it, and it's all still mediocre. It's all still not very well thought out. It's all still not very well written. Like. I thought about doing a video on it. I still probably do want to do a video on it at some point. I just have never... I, I just have been having trouble motivating myself to talk about it. It, it was just so... It was such a painful experience to like 100%. Just because it was... Not that good. And it was so much longer and so much more tedious than the first one. But I... I, I do want to make a video on it at some point. I just need to figure out exactly what I want to say. Sagewater Dragon asks... Now that your film career has firmly planted itself into your YouTube channel, what with the Uncle Gareth trailer being hosted here, are you planning to integrate them more closely, or are you wanting it, meaning the YouTube channel, to always stay a hobby? I don't know if I'm going to leave the Uncle Gareth trailer on here. I might, because I had also uploaded it to my other channel that is just kind of like my film slash actor channel. That's just my name. Um, I, put, I initially put it up here because this is where the subscribers are. And so I was like, I want people to actually see this because we're trying to get this, uh, we're trying to get this funded, we're trying to get this made. Uh, so I initially put it there. Um, but I do, I do want this to remain a hobby. Like it's important to me that this is something that I just come back to when I'm not doing like serious work and I just kind of spend time making things with no pressure that I like want to make and enjoy making. Um, I don't think I'm going to do a lot of film stuff on here. If anything, I would, it would, would probably just be the extent of what I did when we were doing Gareth, which is just making a video kind of telling people about it so that they know what's happening. Uh, but I do want to keep any like really intensive film stuff on the other channel just because I want there to be a clean separation so that, you know, you can just go to where the stuff that you want is. Bobby Lopez asks... How did you get so interested in Smash, and what made you want to make speculation videos about it? Uh, I got interested in Smash... Well, I mean, I got the first one for Christmas, like, when I was a kid. And so, I had a lot of fun just playing it then. I thought it was just a lot of fun 
to be able to play with friends. I was always a gamer that enjoyed playing with friends. Co-op stuff was always more fun to me. So like, it was never I was never as into playing against my friends as much as I was playing with my friends against computers and stuff. Um, and it was also just kind of like I only knew who like half the characters were at that point because I was a kid. Uh, and so it was kind of like the exposure. It kind of gave me like the exposure to like all these characters that I didn't really know yet uh, when I was a kid. And so then I did find out more about them, and I found out about these other games. Uh, so that was just kind of cool. Is how it was like this universe. Uh, but I got really into it when Melee came out, and then me and my cousin uh, Scotty played it constantly, and that was kind of like just how we would hang out. Um, so Melee is when I got really, really into it. Then when I became friends with Isaac in high school, uh, it was games were like one of the big ways we bonded, and so we went to Brawl's midnight launch together, and we spent a lot of time like playing Brawl, and uh, that was kind of it. Um, it's just always been something I've been able to share with my friends, and so that's probably why it appealed to me so much. Game Freak One Six Four X asks, "What are your thoughts on Nintendo's current situation and their future?" I think Nintendo's in a really interesting spot just because they are. They, they are now in an industry that is not predominantly Eastern. Uh, the whole thing started with like Microsoft uh, joining in, and so you saw you started seeing the transition in like the business philosophies of uh, of like all these game developers and producers. Mostly the producers, the publishers, I should say. Mostly the publishers uh, started moving towards this uh, very like Western American capitalism idea. Uh, where it was all about maximizing profits. So you started seeing a focus more on how you sell this game day one and uh, then move on to the next one like a year later, sometimes less than a year, you're already got another entry in that franchise out and you just keep trying to drive like profits and sales up. Whereas Nintendo always played the game uh, initially where they would take their time making the game. And uh, it was more about making games that would last, that people would still want to play like years later as opposed to uh, kind of just moving on in the franchise like right away, always having like the next one coming. Um, and things like all this DLC and everything. And so it's interesting because it changed the way that the market worked and the way that people considered uh, kind of like winning in the industry. Uh, it became more about like, okay, well who's selling the most consoles? And so the Wii U got slagged off because it didn't sell that much like right away. Uh, and people were like criticizing the library that it had. But it's weird because it had a better library than like the 64 had. 64 launched with two games. And yeah, one of those was Super Mario 64, but the other one was Pilot Wings. So like, it's weird that people look back on the 64 so fondly, uh, but the Wii U is like slagged off. And then when, uh, and then with the PS3 launch, because when the PlayStation 3 launched, it had a worse lineup than the Wii U had. But everybody was saying, ah, oh, the PS3 was just successful. Um, not at first, but they are now. So it's just this, it was a, it was a very different it seems like it starts shifting more towards quantity instead of quality. And so you see Nintendo start trying to kind of adjust to that because their shareholders want to get those profits that the other companies are making. Uh, when they see how well Call of Duty sells, when they see how much money companies are making off the DLC, the shareholders are like, why aren't we getting some of that? Like, why aren't we getting that profit? So I think that Amiibos were largely a response to that. And so I think what we're seeing now is this really interesting transition where Nintendo is still trying to make games their way. They're still trying to make games that last. But they're also trying to keep shareholders happy, and they're also trying to adjust to this rapidly different philosophy uh, behind, like, consumer, uh, consumer and publisher relations, I guess. Uh, so we're seeing them, like, move into the cell phone market, but they're trying to do it in a way that isn't, like, completely ripping people off the way that other cell phone games did. So it's... It's bizarre. I think the NX... I'm feeling good about the NX, though. Um, I still think the Wii U was a great console that just never got that many great games made for it outside of Nintendo's own games. Uh, I feel like there was a lot of potential that didn't get tapped into because the narrative became very anti-Wii U as soon as it didn't sell a bunch. Because Nintendo didn't advertise their console like crazy, they want to advertise their games. Uh, whereas, I remember I was actually working like an event for the PS4 launch and they advertised the console like crazy, but they didn't have any games, they didn't even talk about games. It was just all about like how great this console was, and they sold tons of consoles when there weren't even any games for it yet. So it was, like, it was really interesting how well that did in comparison.
It's just that it's it's that Western capitalism hype culture uh, that is kind of driving the games industry now. So we'll see. But they just won E3 with one game. So you know who uh, who knows? <laughs> Out of all your videos so far, what is your favorite? Or which um, is your favorite? Pardon me. I mean, Last of Us was nice just to have it finally be done because I worked so long on that one in comparison to like all the others. There's still things that I wish I had done better though. I didn't have very good sound equipment when we did the skit, so that came out kind of weird. And I feel like it could have looked and sounded a lot better with the uh, with the actual interview segments. There's a lot of stuff I could have done to make it better. Um, it was also the first time making like a nothing but serious kind of long video like that, as opposed to one with a bunch of jokes in it. Um, I was kind of proud of Pandora's Tower just because I made that in like two weeks. Like playing the game and writing it and then shooting it and editing it. I think I shot and edited it in three days. So that was that, that, that was crazy. Um, but I also really like the Colm video that I did just because uh, I feel like it's a video that nobody else would make because uh, I don't think anybody would ever talk about Flash games like that. Um, and Colm was a series that I really, really liked. Um, so I'm pretty proud of that one. Oh, yeah. Uncle Gareth is the answer. Do you have anything you're hoping to see from the 25th anniversary Sonic the Hedgehog game? Uh, quality. <laughs> <laughs> He's gotta go fast. No, I just, uh... Sonic's about speed. Um... I don't know, I've never been huge on Sonic, and generally I find that my opinions tend to run against the grain. Like, I thought Lost World was actually decent when I played the demo and everything, and I thought the Generations was a little overrated. I didn't think it was You just good. bought Lost World too. I actually just yeah. bought Lost World so I can actually, like, play the whole thing through and see if I'm gonna do, like, a, another video about it or not. Um, but, uh... I think I want to see them focus on just doing a couple things really well instead of throwing a ton of mechanics in that only get used a couple times and aren't really fleshed out. Because that, that tends to be the problem with uh, a lot of the recent Sonic games is they just keep throwing in all these gimmicks for no real reason. You don't need them to be there. They're not, they're not challenging. They're not... They're just there. And uh, also better writing would be nice. It'd be nice to actually have a Sonic game that's well written. God, like all of them are cringeworthy. Also, Chaos. I want to see Chaos. KH Jedi Master asks Thoughts on Kingdom Hearts 3 and what new worlds do you want to see? I just can't get excited for it. Like, I was excited for it for a really long time, and then, like, when it actually got announced, I kind of realized that I was just kind of. At this, at this point, like, I'm kind of just done, like, waiting for it. I'll see what happens when it actually comes out, but I'm just not really that interested in speculating or, any, or anything anymore about Kingdom Hearts. Um, Birth by Sleep was great, though. But, yeah. I just have kind of lost my zeal for it by this point. But what new worlds do you want to see? <sighs> Star Wars. Fuck you. Everybody Give a starts. real answer. Rista Cat's pretty cool. I love Rista Cat. Robin Hood. Robin Hood would be interesting. Just combine them. Just like all of the animal movies in one Fox day. and the Hound. <laughs> oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> I can get real sad real fast. But it, it, there's none There's none that you're just like, that'd be pretty cool to like see this world. I think Rista Cat's would be interesting to do as a musical world. If you're gonna have a musical world, I think that'd be a better fit than Atlantis. I think it'd be fun. Mm. Yeah, the Aristocats is like a side role. Yeah. Um, it'd be cool to see Mulan's come back. Other than that, I haven't really been that interested in recent Disney movies. Dingo Tag asks, I got a question. What do you think of the Ape Escape franchise? I think Dingo Tag's stupid. That's my thoughts on the Ape Escape franchise. He asks all the time. He knows I haven't played it. Tale of the Toaster asks, have you any interest in trying a game in the Zero Escape series? 
Yes, I was actually just talking about it today. Um, I, I'm probably going to order them soon just because I'm running out of 3DS games to play. And I need something to play on the subway. Uh, but they look like I would like them a lot, so I, I don't know why I put them off, I put them off for this long, but I'm, I'm going to play them. Yeah. Yeah, so that was all the questions. Uh, thanks for asking. Thanks for subscribing and watching. And uh, hopefully uh, you won't unsubscribe when you see the new video. No, oh, that was stupid. <laughs> Everything's stupid. I can't that's what, it, everything sucks, that's why you're gonna make things... This is why I don't do videos by myself. This is why I always put other people in the videos. By myself, I'm just not interesting. It's true. Yeah, it is. Yeah, you need it. I'm a pretty boring person. Yeah. No, you're, you're awful. Like, I, uh, the reason I'll never be a successful YouTuber is because I don't, I can't come out and just like, Hey guys, it's Lord Jackal, alright, we're gonna answer some questions today. Oh, you want to be Ray William some, Johnson? Is that what he does? Yeah, dude, that's what he does all the time. I thought he, like, jacked off on a camel? Yeah. <laughs>